inclusive, sustainable, and resilient. These SDGs represent the hope for our continual betterment here on this planet as we work towards leaving our home in a good state so we can proudly and lovingly hand over its care to our children. Here at Sustainable Oman, we're working on building awareness through, one, mainstreaming the SDGs, which means making them accessible to every single individual and building them into organizational governance. Two, building awareness on current SDG aligned projects or initiatives in Oman. So many great initiatives are already going on and the scope is huge for everyone to get involved. Three, share stories of SDG journeys in Oman and beyond to inspire us into having hope in these challenging times and make us realize that we can each take individual action to contributing to the SDGs and the Oman 2040 vision. Four, inspire dialogue on all topics related to progressive and inclusive development. We're all about sharing knowledge and growing together. The more we talk, the more we can act holistically and wisely. Five, call for action on personal roles and responsibilities towards achieving the global goals for sustainable development. This means you and me. We become active contributors in the community, making protecting the environment and businesses a success. Today, we're focusing on SDG4, which represents quality education. And its main purpose is to ensure inclusive and quality education for all and promote a culture of lifelong learning. Education has been and will continue to be a central pillar to the development and progress of the Sultanate and has always been core to the reality and the delivery of the vision of Oman. This is demonstrated by the numerous schools, educational institutes and universities that Oman has built here, but also the collaborations and learning opportunities and exchanges that many Omanis have had at an international level. Some would argue that the learning never stops. Today, we were really spoilt for choice in terms of which organization we could highlight here as there are so many incredible numbers of organizations out there doing amazing things. In the end, we've brought you a speaker who represents education intertwining with environmental awareness, responsible consumption and sustainable cities. Each of those are in themselves one of the 17 SDGs. So, as I've mentioned, there are 17 SDGs. Each one of them has a set of ambitions and targets. Each SDG is taking a life of its own and many companies, financial institutions and governments are developing tangible actions to help deliver on them. They may look like they stand alone, but they are actually intertwined with each other. Often where one progresses, it pulls forward one or more other SDG. You may already have started to become aware of them. And this will only increase over the coming years as almost everyone works towards delivering these 2030 targets. If you're looking for more information, I would heartily encourage you to check our website for more info and links. Atamanna antastantio o fino webinar. Wa shukran leti mamkum. Atamanna lakum saha jeida. We hope you enjoy this, the webinar. Please don't hesitate to ask questions and share feedback. But until next time, stay learning and stay safe. Back over to you, Mariam. Thank you, April, for the awesome introduction. And I applaud your practice for the Arabic. I know you're pretty nervous about that. Sorry, um, No worries at all. Um, let me just put the video on a more, let's say, 
manageable uh, um, platform. Let me know if it, the video is uh, visible for everyone or not yet. Not yet, I will make sure it is. So, Sadhana, uh, would you like to give us a quick introduction on our speaker, please? Yes. Um, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for um, spending your time to attend this webinar today. Um, with us, we have uh, Mr. Mohab Ali Al Hinai, and uh, he is currently serving as the head of environment, <clears throat> Environmental Center of Excellence ECE at uh, Oman Environmental Services Holding Company, uh, also known as BIA. We must have uh, seen BIA almost everywhere in Oman right now. Um, previously, Dr. Hinai was an assistant professor at the Department of Biology, College of Sciences at Sultan Qaboos University, um, where his research work focused on the production of biofuels from various microorganisms. Presently, Dr. Hinai is spearheading the Environmental Center of Excellence at BIA. Foster research and development in the waste management sector, as well as capacity building, knowledge transfer, and community outreach. Specifically, the center is designed to ensure such as circular economy activities, sustainable development goals. Sorry, Mariam, I think there is a video playing in the background. Oh. All right. Yeah. Okay. Is so, it still um, running? There we go. No. Tony, yeah. would you mind just repeating the last couple of sentences? Yes, just... yes. Okay. I'll, I'll, again, I'll, I'll speak about um, what Dr. Hinai is doing right now. So uh, Dr. Hinai right now is um, at the Environmental Center of Excellence at BIA, which aims to foster research and development within the waste management sector, um, as well as capacity building and transfer of knowledge and outreaching uh, into the community. Um, specifically, th this center that we are going to talk about is designed to ensure broader sustainability initiatives uh, like circular economy activities, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals or also known as the SDGs and waste management hierarchy uh, are integrated throughout the company and also at a national level. So um, welcome, uh, Dr. Mohab, and over to you, Mariam. Thank you, Sadhana, Thank you. for the uh, quick introduction for Dr. Mohab. Uh, Dr. Mohab, would you like to add a few, uh, let's say, words um, or a little bit, give us a little bit more about uh, yourself, uh, your experience with the Environmental Center of Excellence, um, and just, uh, an overall added uh, uh, information for our viewers. Sure. Uh, thank you very much for the kind introduction and for uh, having me this evening. Um, so, you know, I joined BIA uh, uh, late 2017, uh, almost three years ago from, uh, from uh, Sultan Qaboos University. Um, the, uh, they had a, the, the management team there had a vision uh, of establishing this uh, center of excellence where it becomes like a sustainability hub uh, for Oman and for the, for the region. And uh, for our, uh, you know, uh, people joining us today, we uh, started uh, operations uh, late 2015. And where, as we started uh, taking over the waste, the sustainable waste management, um, you know, sector uh, from the local municipalities, um, management saw that there was a lot of expertise and knowledge uh, that is being gained and they thought we need uh, an entity um, that kind of harbors and uh, you know benefits from these uh, experiences 
uh, that are gained. And that's where the idea of the environmental center of excellence uh, came about. Uh, initially, uh, you know, uh, we had uh, we had a steering committee that was uh, formed by the uh, previous or the you know now uh, merged with the Ministry of uh, Higher Education, the Research Council. Uh, we had the Research Council members from the Research Council from Petroleum Development Oman, the various ministries, uh, and our sister company Haya, uh, to kind of uh, lay the foundation of how the center uh, is meant. Uh, you know, to function and what's it, its roles. Uh, so um, we work closely uh, with, uh, you know, uh, international partners uh, to come up with a plan uh, for the center. And uh, the initially it was supposed to be uh, kind of a spin-off, an independent entity that deals with sustainability as a whole uh throughout Oman and the region but obviously because the uh you know the certain challenges that uh, Oman is facing uh, right now uh, we the, the company Bia thought well we're going to harbor or incubate the center uh in Bia uh for the foreseeable future and as you've uh, mentioned earlier right we have four pillars really in the center uh which is research and development uh, capacity building, uh, into, which is uh, handled by BI Academy. Uh, we have the technology assessment and commercialization and the environmental uh, data uh, management. And, you know, we have, uh, the team has grown from myself and uh, one other employee. Now we're uh, more than a dozen people and uh, I'm very happy and proud of the team I have assembled and uh, they definitely uh, make, look, make me look smarter than I really am. So I do appreciate a shout out to all my team members uh, out there if they're listening. Thank you for the additional information, uh, Dr. Mohab. Uh, we'll be sharing now the video uh, concerning the, um, basically the presentation about the Center of Excellence. Um, so if you bear with me here, um, we can commence with it. Um, and you can start, I guess, talking about, you, you gave us a, a, an idea of the Environmental Center of Excellence, uh, but I guess you can start delving right. into it a little bit more. Right. Um, so if I, wish, if I take some of these pillars that I mentioned earlier and really try to expand upon them, you know, research and development, we saw, our assessment at least, uh, we saw that there was kind of a gap uh, between academia, the government, and the you know the local industries or the companies around. So the environmental center of excellence is really trying to become a, a bridge, you know, uh, to uh, bridge the gap between these uh, three uh, entities and basically kind of get them all to sit down and talk the same uh, language. So what we're doing now in the research and development area, uh, we are collaborating with local and international uh, partners uh, to kind of bring. Uh, innovative uh, solutions uh, to Oman. So a recent project that we just uh, recently kicked off is between Air Liquide, which is a Fortune 500 company, and Sultan Qaboos University and, and ourselves uh, to really try to find, uh, you know, sustainable ways of converting our waste, which is a resource. Waste is a resource. Uh, converting it into industrial uh, gases, which is, you know, air liquids uh, expertise. We're also working um, uh, with various uh, entities uh, in Oman to kind of uh, understand how we can minimize waste, whether it's uh, at the source or how we can divert waste away from our landfills, because uh, simply uh, taking waste and dumping it in landfills is not sustainable. Uh, you cannot do that for you know the long term, uh, and so we have a lot of these uh, initiatives uh, going on right now. Now, if you come to the BA Academy, which is a capacity building, and I think it uh, might be uh, more in line with today's theme of education. And BA Academy is basically trying to build capacity uh, within the environmental sector and sustainability sector and circular economy sector. No more. So basically, we have a model of reaching out to all, uh, you know, demographics uh, in Oman, starting from school children, college children, 
but also, uh, you know, employees, you know, people that are working and executives. Uh, and we have been offering uh, a few courses uh, that are uh, continuous professional uh, development courses with our international partners uh, out of Chicago in the US and out of uh, England, uh, IEMA. Uh, so we, we are really trying to um, plant the seed uh, of sustainability. Uh, and, and you know, when you mention sustainability, uh, people immediately think environment, but that's not really accurate, right? If you take sustainability as a whole, there are three pillars to it, right? You have the economy, you have the society, and you have the environment. And what you're trying to do really is achieve harmony between uh, all these uh, three. And that is the message that we're trying, uh, you know, to get out there. And we've been really active uh, in this field. And uh, We've had a lot of success and, uh, you know, last year, I believe we've reached over 100,000 uh, school children. Uh, and I think a lot of the government entities and a lot of our, uh, you know, sister companies that are now under the Oman Investment Authority reach out to us uh, to help them drive their uh, sustainability uh, goals as well. Uh, so that is BA Academy uh, in a nutshell, uh, basically. And yeah, these are just some of the examples of, we have the, uh, you know, AIMA uh, foundation certificate that ran last uh, month, uh, it ran online. Uh, we had even people uh, from neighboring countries from Saudi Arabia register uh, through us to take this uh, certificate. And at the end of the certificate, uh, at the end of the course, you actually have to sit down for an exam to be a certified uh, AIMA, uh, you know, participant. Uh, and we are expanding on our uh, courses, uh, our offerings, uh, you know, with CSE and with AIMA and with other uh, global and regional uh, partners as well. And we hope uh, next year we are uh, going to, uh, you know, deploy a little fancy, uh, uh, two fancy trailers uh, that are educational trailers that are like kind of like moving sustainability uh, education hubs and uh, museums, if you will, all over uh, Oman. And we hope that uh, we reach even more uh, students in the, in, the, in the future. And, uh, you know, the social outreach, and I think, uh, Mariam, if you can move to the next slide, this, the community outreach and social outreach where we actually go out. And as you see here, the kids and uh, one of my team members uh, kind of educating them about uh, sustainability. And uh, we've been to Salala, we have been to Musendem, we have been all over uh, Oman in different uh, wilayats, different uh, schools. And we're actually, uh, you know, working with the Ministry of Education at the moment to kind of uh, put in place uh, some topics related to sustainability within the curriculum uh, for school children. And I think that is very important because if you plant a seed for these children while they are very, very young, they are actually going to be uh, the champions uh, of sustainability uh, for the next uh, generation. So that is something that we really focused, uh, uh, focused on. And we try to make it fun at the same time. So, uh, you know, learning doesn't, has, it doesn't have to be boring. It can be fun and exciting, uh, you know, and that's what we're trying uh, to do uh, uh, with these kids and uh, obviously with even the executives and the professional people working in this field as well. All right, so this is again what we are trying to to achieve, right? It's a, a mindset shift, right? A behavioral uh, change. We want to we want people to uh, really uh, change your, their behavior, but not just you know you can always incentivize people uh, if you, you know, for example, public literate, right? If you incentivize, if you like have penalties, harsh penalties for people that. Uh, you know, throw their trash away. They're not going to do it because they're scared of paying the fine. But once that fine, or if no one is looking, they're still going to do it because they're only scared of the fine. But what we're trying to do really is have a mindset shift. You know, have a, a behavioral change uh, uh, for these people that to understand why this is wrong and why this is harming uh, the environment. And how we've been working and collaborating uh, with the Behavioral uh, Economics Unit uh, out of the Ministry of Economy uh, for these, uh, for some of these uh, topics. And I think they've uh, been doing a wonderful uh, job so far. Uh, 
All right, and here, this is how, how many uh, people we have engaged and how many students we've reached. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, last year, we've reached uh, more than 100,000 uh, students. We have engaged with almost 130,000 uh, people, uh, different uh, events, uh, different, uh, 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 you know, in different places around uh, Oman. And we're really trying also to, uh, you know, make a splash. We were organizing uh, was supposed to happen this year, uh, but unfortunately, it got postponed. Uh, the uh, uh, you know um, a conference, a global conference dealing with sustainability and technology, and uh, how you can bring what is the role of education, how you can bring these uh, you know homegrown technologies that really help your uh, you know your economy and your environment and your sustainability. And actually, the idea gained a lot of traction that uh, it was expanded to being the Oman Sustainability Week. And, you know, the Ministry of Energy, previously the Ministry of Oil and Gas, is now kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, driving this along with PDO. And uh, we hope that the Oman Sustainability Week is going to take place next year, uh, sometime in November. Hopefully, by that time, everybody will be vaccinated against these, this uh, pandemic and life can go back to some kind of uh, normal. Um, so like I mentioned, next slide, the uh, research and development. So we, what we did here, uh, one of the uh, projects of the R&D team was really technology commercialization, technology assessment and commercialization. One of the things that I've noticed is when you think technology, when you say the word technology, people immediately think digital technology. And that is fine, right? That digital technology is one of the technologies available. But there are many kinds of technologies, right? There is social technology, uh, there is social innovation, there is perceptual technology, perceptual innovation. And these are the things uh, that we try to make people understand. And so what we did here, we uh, collaborated with a local uh, SME uh, consultancy firm called Inspired Solutions. And we rolled out our first corporate accelerator. Uh, Eco Innovate uh, Oman. Uh, we had uh, 15 SMEs, uh, young, aspiring, uh, you know, entrepreneurs. And the idea was, you know, this is different than an incubator, right? This is an accelerator. So the idea, ideally, for you to join the accelerator, you would have to have a company that is running, and you would have to have a product or a prototype, or you'd have to have some kind of market share. And once you come into this program, We'll give you business uh, coaching. Uh, we'll give you uh, technology coaching, you know, technical expertise, and help you grow your product and grow your market share. And it was it was very successful. Uh, and uh, you know, as a next step, uh, we uh, signed agreements uh, with partners in the U.S. and in Europe for potentially one or two of these SMEs will really have, um, you know, uh, a product that has high potential for them to go out there and further develop it, further refine it and make it market ready so that it can penetrate the market either in Oman or in the, in the region. And that is Eco Innovate. We're about to conclude the first, uh, you know, the first uh, uh, batch, if you will. And we're starting batch two, uh, beginning of next year, inshallah. And Iswa, I saw that. Uh, okay, so <clears> just um, so the... uh, apologies, Dr. Sure. Mohan. Mm -hmm. Just uh, to all the attendees, uh, typically with our webinars, we keep all the Q and A's towards the end. So if you have any questions, make sure you put them on the uh, Q and A tab, and they will be answered by Dr. Mohab at the end of his talk. Thank you. Okay, so I'll move on to the next slide for you. Go on, Dr. Mohab. Sure. Okay, so Iswa, the International Solid Waste Association. So ISWA is basically the go-to uh, organization when it comes to waste uh, management. Uh, every year they hold a Congress uh, that is attended by almost 2000 uh, people. And uh, they also have regional chapters uh, throughout Europe, uh, South America, uh, North America, Asia, Australia. And we thought, you know what? We need one in the Middle East uh, so in March, just uh, 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 before the pandemic started, we managed uh, to bring in the ISWA president and we announced the launch of the International Solid Waste Association MENA regional chapter that is going to be hosted uh, in Muscat. And this is basically going to be a hub 
for all ISWA members across uh, the region to discuss our common you know, environment and sustainability uh, issue. And it's basically a network of professionals uh, that are working to you know, educate, uh, whether it's governments or private sector, on the importance of uh, sustainable waste management and sustainability uh, as a whole. So that is something we are very proud uh, of. And on that note, uh, we are actually hosting the ISWA World Congress in 2023, first time uh, in the Middle East. So that is also something that we are really uh, proud of, uh, of having. May I ask a question, if you don't mind, just to get the ball Absolutely. rolling, perhaps I'm preempting. Um, I've got quite a number and I see that questions are coming. Um, I'm, I am quite interested in the, the, the deeper aspects of these, this solid waste association. Can you maybe highlight the kind of particular aspects that you think um, uh, Omar needs to focus on and um, whether there are any solutions already being considered? Um, what kind of things are you going to be focusing on and, and what kind of things are there in terms of synergies amongst the other Gulf countries? Okay, so, uh, you know, when it comes to waste, uh, so per person per day in Oman, we uh, produce around 1.2 uh, kilograms per person per day, which is around the global average. Uh, some of our neighboring countries are you know, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7. And, you know, in, in the best way to tackle waste is at the source, is at the consumer level, okay? So it's educating people of not uh, buying, for example, food waste. Almost a third of the waste received in our landfills is food waste, which is really unfortunate. Uh, so we really try to educate uh, the people on the importance of minimizing their waste and you know, rationalizing what they consume. And that's not just good for the environment, that's also good for their pockets and bank accounts, right? You don't need to you know, go spend 50 reals or 100 reals shopping in the supermarket and at the end of the month, 30% you know, of it is tossed away. So that's 30 reals down the, down the bin, right? Down the drain, basically. So what we're trying to do also is the technologies uh, that are available to divert waste. So educating the public is one, diverting waste, there's always going to be waste, right? Uh, you know, they always tell you the zero waste principle. I'm not a big believer of that. As long as human civilization and humans are around, there's always going to be waste, okay? Uh, but is it, it is, how do you design our modern equipments, right? So when you talk about circular economy, people often think circular economy is just recycling products, but that's just a part of it, right? If you look at circular economy, it's a full chain. It starts from designing, uh, you know, the products. So designing, for example, your mobile phones, your laptops, making them last longer, making them easily repairable, then also taking into consideration at some point they will become obsolete and they will be, need to be replaced, that they are easily recycled and can enter the remanufacturing cycle uh, once again, and that is circular economy in you know the broader sense. And this is a lot of the things that ISWA uh, is trying to uh, to push for uh, throughout its local network, throughout its uh, regional uh, chapters, is how you move to reduce waste at the source and how we can redesign uh, uh, you know our modern lifestyles, if you will. Uh, to minimize uh, this waste and move towards a circular economy. And Oman is actually uh, very, very keen on starting the circular economy. It is actually one of, in Oman 2040 vision, it is explicitly stated as one of the targets, circular economy and environmental uh, sustainability. And from my uh, talks with uh, you know, officials at the Ministry of Economy, that is at the top of their list. Circular economy is, inshallah, going to be one of the supporting uh, pillars for Oman moving forward. So that is really, really good news. So policy making and legislating uh, is another uh, thing that ISWA tries to work with its members uh, to help them drive circular economy. Great. All right. So um, apologies, April. You were gonna thank the doctor. <laughs> thank you, doctor, for the answer. It was a pretty detailed answer. My pleasure. So I'll actually read some of the questions uh, asked by the attendees. 
Um, one of them is actually related to your CSR programs, um, as their question is actually um, asking if they are mentioned on the website, when they are taking place, are they typically webinars, or are they, um, let's say, physical workshops? And of course, in this case, when we have the COVID situation, it'll be hard to have, um, let's say, physical workshops. But um, the, the CSRs must be going on. Um, and if there are dates, are they mentioned on the website? If not, will they be mentioned soon? So, so you mean these uh, professional courses that we are offering? Is that is that? Correct. I'm assuming that's the, yeah. So Correct. yeah, we do announce we do announce yes. that on our website and our, on our verse, uh, you know, various social media accounts, whether it's uh, Twitter uh, or LinkedIn or Instagram. So if you follow those, you'll uh, be up to date with everything uh, related to Bia. Okay. Um, another one of those questions is: uh, You seem to be quite active. Where can the public read about all the initiatives being taken currently by BIA? Okay, a good place to start is our uh, website. Uh, but again, we have a fantastic uh, communications team. Uh, so our social media accounts, our Twitter accounts, our LinkedIn and Instagram accounts is definitely uh, a place that I would personally uh, start following to, to know more about uh, our company and what we do. All right, fantastic. And we'll be uh, we'll be posting to all the attendees. We'll be posting the BEA website on the chat. So um, keep your eyes glued to the chat because we'll as we're going, we're going to add details of uh, things that you can benefit from. Uh, another one of the questions from our attendees: um, Can you please share contact details uh, or the website for the Iswa Mina chapter? So that, like I mentioned before, is another fun fact that we can share on the chat box um, that sure. would be available to all the attendees. So at least they, they can have a way of accessing, you know, your social media outlets, um, a connection to the ISWA. And maybe if people, uh, if a few people had a few additional questions uh, regarding how to uh, become members, uh, that's something that they can ask you. Um, sure. Another question. Good question, I believe, uh, that's coming up is, it's good that you are raising awareness about food waste, but what is BIA doing in terms of waste separation? Why is there no municipal waste separation yet? Uh, why not introduce composting of domestic organic waste? And what about plastic recycling? So it's it's a pretty heavy question. Um, it's a loaded so one. I will, <laughs> yeah, yes, quite loaded. Um, so we can break it down to uh, what is BIA doing in terms of waste separation and why is there no municipal waste separation yet? Okay, so we did, uh, we did look at other uh, countries and their experience in segregation at the source where we have four bins or three bins uh, in front of houses or communal bins. Uh, the results were not very encouraging. I think Germany had the highest segregation rate at around 30% uh, or so. So the results were not very encouraging. Uh, so we are looking now at either waste to energy uh, projects. Uh, we are also starting the reverse vending machines, which you are going to see very, very soon uh, around different uh, petrol stations where you basically take your water bottle or your plastic bottle, whatever it is, drop it inside, and you can actually get points uh, to re recharge your mobile phone. Uh, so these are going to be deployed, uh, 22 dozen of them, I think, around Masfat for a start in the uh, different uh, petrol stations. So that's a start. But we are also looking at uh, biogas stations, right? Producing biogas uh, from food waste. And we are in talks with Sultan Qaboos University uh, and the German university and other uh, entities are uh, in Amman and uh, that is progressing. So we hope that we'll see the light of day uh, very, very soon. Um, so just uh, to add on, actually, just a follow up question to what you said. What? So you spoke about the challenges uh, when it came to waste separation. Can you maybe touch on what these challenges were? Well, it is one of the things is we realize people are not going to take the time 
to actually look, okay, here's plastic, here's paper, here's general waste. People usually don't do that. And like I mentioned, uh, Germany, I think they had, I think, 30 or 40 percent segregation rate when they did that. So that number is not very high. That means that the waste that's coming to our landfills is still going to needs to be segregated again. So I think segregation at the landfills uh, might be a better option. And we're looking at these new technologies now, uh, these robotics and uh, you know artificial intelligence. And there are a few companies uh, in Europe and the US that are uh, developing uh, these uh, automated segregation uh, technologies that we are uh, reaching out to and hope to uh, deploy in our landfills as well. Okay. But the thing is, it's you know, it's it is not cheap. You know, it is not cheap. So we also have to be mindful. Like I said, it's achieving harmony between the economy, the environment, and the society. And and so we really have to balance this. I see. Okay. Um... So this is also a, a follow-up to the previous question that was asked. Um, why not introduce composting of domestic organic waste? And you had uh, spoken about biogas. So maybe that, that is co uh, connected to that aspect. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, so I mean, composting at home, I mean, we have no uh, authority at what people need to do at home. So if you feel like you have enough food waste for you to buy a composter and do it at home, by all means, you can do that. I mean, we're not stopping you. So into, uh, composting at home, it's the consumer's uh, prerogative to do that. Is there no aspect of perhaps an incentive program where they can incentivize, um, let's say, uh, a consumer to go ahead and, and utilize a composter? Or is this, a, this is something, like you said, economies um, or, or the circular economies, I guess, um, and how yeah. you can actually benefit from paying so much in the beginning and, and is it worth it in the end and so on? Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's uh, there are composting facilities. So Haya Water does have a composting facility, and the food waste that we're planning on taking you know, on taking the food waste or the organic waste and uh, producing biogas uh, for it. But if again, if the per, if if the household uh, want to produce fertilizers by a composter at home, then they by all means they are welcome to do that. I mean, if they reach out to us, we, we can maybe help uh, with some expertise, telling them how to do it or how what's the best way. Uh, but again, that's the consumer's problem. Okay. Um, All right. I, so I, can yeah, I just go ahead. ask you, uh, Dr. Mahab, um, we are talking about segregated waste and segregated waste bins. So BR does have these uh, public recycling stations, the PRS in different parts of the city where few of us do put our segregated waste. Can you tell us what happens to the segregated plastic, uh, metal, cardboard, paper, you, uh, and glass? Yeah, there are four categories. So for few of us who actually take the initiative of segregating our waste, going to the public recycling station and putting those wastes over there, how does BIA go about that? What happens to those separated waste? Because of, some of us do that and some of us are conscious and uh, does it again go back to the landfill from the, those or there's some other, something else happens, something good, okay. something better? So, so, so these stations, if I, uh, are you talking about these big kind of like metal uh, things you see outside yes. buildings sometimes? Okay, I don't think these yes. are BS, yes. uh, but, uh, but what happens is there are now different SMEs coming up that do recycling. So there is a paper recycling uh, company that is, uh, came up uh, this year. There is a plastic yes. recycling company. There is a, you know, electronic waste recycling company. So there are a lot of SMEs that are coming up now to do that. And we're really trying to uh, help them, uh, you know, by directing waste to them. Uh, and we've been working with, for example, the uh, Authority for Electricity Regulation, now the Authority for Public Services uh, Regulations, uh, to kind of uh, recycle or old inefficient air conditioning. And we have been directing them to uh, small local SMEs for them to do that. So there, the, it, it slowly but surely uh, uh, that, that that ecosystem is coming up. And we just need so, to keep uh, supporting it and nourishing it. 
So basically, these SMEs, they'll take care of all these segregated waste and they do whatever they have to do with that. Am I right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay, uh, Dr. Mohab, we have a lot of questions, which is I, actually my yeah. favorite part of talks like this is the content always comes towards the end. Um, yeah. So another question, um, the previous questions were from anonymous attendees. So I'll just start uh, actually naming who um, is asking these questions. Um, never mind, the names disappeared. Anyhow, uh, if SMEs are recycling the waste, it means it's profitable. So why is BIA not doing it? No, it is not profitable, okay? It is, it, segregation is expensive. Okay, segregating waste is expensive, but if there is a market uh, for the recycled waste, if there is some policy or regulation that says, you know what, any cardboard or any paper or any packaging manufactured in Oman has to include 30% recycled material, then that ecosystem, this industry is going to flourish. But we don't have this legislation yet, and I am hopeful uh, that the um, uh, you know, authorities will come up with these very soon because you have to look at this as a more holistic accounting. You can't just say, oh, you can recycle and it's profitable. No, it goes hand in hand with regulation, with environmental policy, with circular economic policy, with economic policy uh, in general. So it's really just one, uh, you know, one, uh, you know, pillar or one bolt in a bigger machine uh, for it to work. Okay. Um, Marion, may sure. I? Sure, go ahead, April. Sorry, I see that there's great questions, but what I'm also seeing is that a lot of people are referencing other countries. So it's just made me wonder if um, one of the key things we've spoken about or touched on is the Oman 2040 vision and obviously how that ties into a lot of activities. So I actually just wanted to put it to you, if you don't mind, a very, very high level overview, as you touched on before of those key themes for the 2040 vision. Then my second question is, based on the current context globally and the kind of global disturbance, what are the, the challenges do you think there might be in terms of delivering on that vision that relates to your work? And then the final question would be, if you could do one thing to deliver the 2040 vision, to put all your efforts into it, where would you, where would you like to take Bayer and focus it? Hopefully that's it. Okay, sure. Uh, so obviously one of the, um, you know, if you take plastics, for example, uh, recycling plastic uh, or manufacturing plastic from recycled material right now is not economically viable because oil is so cheap. So producing virgin plastic is much more economically uh, viable. Now, because also, again, at, at least in Oman, because there aren't many regulations that says, you know what, plastic producers, you need to include 30, 50% uh, recycled material in your product. So then it doesn't, it doesn't make economic, economic sense. And what also uh, made the situation more challenging is that China, stop importing waste uh, from you know, European countries and other Asian countries for the remanufacturing uh, processes. So that also made the situation worse and it really exposed a lot of European countries that were uh, talking about zero waste uh, or becoming a, or, or, or are a sustainability hub. So these are two like uh, global challenges uh, that, that, that are facing you know, the if you will, circular economy. But where would I take BIA or where would I say? I, th I think the public. I mean, you have to trust the public to do the right thing. Um, and I'm a big believer in the people. If you plant the seed and if you tell them what is the right thing, and you know, most people are rational. Most people actually do care about the environment and do understand that it is our livelihood comes from the environment. And if you plant that seed and educate the people, I think you'll there be your champions uh, for the future to make the change. Fully agree. Very good. Yeah. Um, another one of the questions uh, 
so uh, this is actually another one related to uh, waste management and who is in charge of uh, waste management regulations and issuance and monitoring in Oman. Good one. Uh, I'm not really sure right now. We're working with the authorities uh, to kind of establish, uh, you know, who's, we know who's the operator, that's BIA, uh, that's clear. Uh, but now who's the uh, policymaker, right? And legislator and, and who's the regulator? And we kind of have an idea. We've been having, have been having these discussions, uh, especially after the new uh, government structure that was announced. So uh, definitely we hope the Environment Authority will be a part of it. Uh, possibly the Authority for uh, Public Services uh, might play a role. And definitely uh, the Ministry of Economy, uh, since they are kind of the, uh, the custodian of the circular economy. So this is my belief, at least. Um... Another question that's actually related to, um, let's say, energy generation from waste. Uh, is there a plan for electricity generation from waste? Any discussion with NEMA group? Uh, absolutely. We had, uh, we had very, very advanced discussion and the project was about, was in the phase of the pre-qualification tender that was announced in the paper last year. Uh, and that uh, we should have, we produce around five to 7,000 tons of municipal uh, waste per day in Oman. And that project would have taken uh, at least half that amount and put and produced electricity uh, from it. Uh, however, because the, again, it's going, goes back to economics and number because the energy from waste is not as economically viable as producing electricity from fossil fuels, and I mean, kilowatt, you know, kilowatt hour for kilowatt hour is cheaper. That's just facts. It's cheaper to produce electricity from fossil fuels than it is from waste. However, like I said, you really need to have a more holistic accounting. If you don't get rid of this waste, what are you going to do? You're going to need to operate and build new landfills. That is expensive. So you need to add that cost into consideration. And, uh, and it is not sustainable uh, that way. So the talks, I'm happy to say that they are again restarting. Uh, so we hope that project moves forward. It is in a very advanced stage, uh, in, my, in my opinion. That's, that's fantastic news. Um, so here's another one. Uh, are you aiming to develop WTE projects to divert sewage water from, uh, I'm guessing SW is sewage water? Maybe not. SW from landfilling? Solid waste. Solid, solid waste. I apologize. Yeah. So are you aiming to develop? So yeah, yeah, go ahead. Develop. Uh, well, so the, the, the project is the same project I mentioned, right? Energy from waste. I, I, I know people use waste to energy, but I, I think you should start with the fancy word first. Energy from waste, EFW, uh, is, uh, again, the project is there. It's uh, in the pre-qualification stage. So we hope if it moves forward, to take off 50 divert 50% of uh, our daily waste from landfills to produce electricity. Any plans for future material recovery facilities? Yes, the general answer is yes, there are some plans and we're uh, looking at the best technologies or the best methods to do that. Great to hear. Um, so we have a lot of actual comments that um, people agreeing with you um, and, and liking a lot of the responses they're That's getting. Uh, yeah, which is, I'm, I'm actually just a, a, like a side note. Um, obviously this is also educational to me as a, as, an, uh, as a panelist. And I'm glad that B is taking, uh, let's say, or spearheading the initiative to move forward with legislation. Because like you, like you had mentioned earlier, uh, the key aspect in Oman is education of the public. Because when you educate the public, it's easier to push legislation like this forward. Uh, because you, you get more support from uh, the community. And it becomes more of a grassroots, uh, let's say, grassroots initiative rather than, uh, let's say, a, a top-down a top initiative. Um, 
So another question uh, is, is legislation, regulation, and order of priority part of the issue why the country is slow to take action? Make it very short, yes. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Okay. Um, what are the ISO standards related to waste management? Well, I mean, when we build, I mean, ISO standards, you know, we, we are 14001, I think, certified and the other ISOs that uh, certification for our operations. But uh, when we build our landfills, when we operate our landfills, the way we dispose of and handle our waste, uh, we typically use either the U.S. Uh, Environment Protection Agency standards or the EU uh, standards. And uh, these are the guidelines uh, we use whenever we uh, you know, build and operate our uh, our landfills. Okay. Uh, is there uh, are there any standards that are currently being tailored for the MENA region, or is it just these legislations that are um, kind of accommodated to the MENA region? Uh, I mean, uh, when I say legislations, I actually mean standards. There isn't a uniform standard for the GCC, you know, unlike, uh, you know, for example, automobiles. When you go buy an automobile, there's a GCC standard for these vehicles. It isn't really, isn't really a GCC standard as of yet for, for example, waste management or the uh, construction of uh, these uh, landfills, sanitary landfills. Uh, so the best, the best, you know, I'm not, we're not, I mean, the, these standards have been around in the US and Europe and Asia for a long time. So we just adopted them uh, to Oman. Okay. Okay. Um, another good one, and perhaps this is, um, it would be very insightful to hear your perspective. Uh, what are the main challenges that you foresee to deliver on your ambitions over the next 10 years? Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, there, there are a lot, obviously, the, the one that comes to mind is uh, resources. Uh, you know, if you don't have the resources uh, to uh, initiate or, you know, uh, your projects or carry through with them, then that becomes a very, very uh, difficult task, almost impossible task uh, to do. Okay. All right. Um, Mariam, may I jump in? Yes, go ahead. And in fact, because I'm looking at the questions and I'm just seeing a few crossovers, one thing that I think is quite interesting is um, the discussion about how we elicit the kind of behaviors that we, we want to um, support the delivery of a sort of sustainable um, environmental practice and a sustainable economy. Uh, you talked about a center for behavioral economics, I think. So I don't know if that ties with mm -hmm. that, but how do we change behaviors, our behaviors, others' behaviors? How do you, how do we do that? Oh, that's a good topic. I think uh, I'm not an expert in the field, so maybe you want to host my sister. Uh, mm -hmm. she, she's a sh social marketer uh, by training. Uh, it is really, I think, you know, it, making sure that people understand the facts first. People must understand the facts and you have to deliver the facts in a rational uh, way uh, for them uh, to kind of accept where you're going with this. And I think that is where the behavior economics unit that was set up in the Ministry of Economy, uh, that was their vision, that's their mission, uh, at least. I, I don't think there is a, a right or wrong answer, or I think, I think just you really, the, the way you deliver your message, I would say personally, again, I'm not an expert in this, but the way you deliver your message and how you spin it is very important. Yes, it's something that we, we're discovering through our initiatives, the various initiatives that we run with Sustainable Oman. We try mm -hmm. to, um, we're learning as we go. So we try to address different audiences and um, I suppose I was looking for a quick answer from you, but it isn't an easy one to answer. So, so thank you for your perspective. Uh, April, I think you can continue the quest line of questioning. 
um, it's not questioning that made it sound <laughs> horrible, yeah, but I think a well, lot of people like are, <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess a lot of people are actually really intrigued about what the uh, ECE is doing and legislation in Oman and, and obviously bringing examples from the rest of the world um, on how they go about um, uh, solid waste management and uh, waste to energy and so on. Uh, so perhaps April, uh, I believe you you have the questions there. Um, you can continue with a, a few of them. Yeah. So um, I think we've asked a few questions, and there's a bit of crossover. So I'm just having a scan because I see a few questions have come in. Um, in the meanwhile, I have a question. May I ask, Dr. Mohab? Go ahead. Sure. Yes. Out of curiosity, uh, these landfills that have been created in Oman, I think in the past two and a half, three years, we, we've had few uh, good landfills come up. Who creates them and what is the uh, thought process that goes behind that we should have a landfill in Amirat or in Barka or um, somewhere further? So how do we decide what is the capacity of the landfill that we want? Or is BR deciding that or is there another governing body who tells... Yeah. Okay, so Bia decides that. No, it's, it's, it's yeah, so Bia decides that. So basically, I, 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 we should have put these pictures, uh, they're really nasty, but we should have put them in the presentation. You know, we had uh, almost 400 open dump sites and they were extremely, if you Google, I mean, if you Google it and you'll find some pictures and it was, it was, it was not sanitary it was not healthy at all so we kind of closed took the, them out of service decommissioned these open dump sites we're in the process now of rehabilitating them but that's again not expensive not easy and uh, but now we only have 11 engineered landfills throughout yes. Oman in uh, Amirat in Barka uh, yes. in very in uh, the far in various areas and this is where all the uh, a municipal solid waste goes to, but also uh, we have uh, an industrial and hazardous waste treatment facility in Sahar, an integrated hazardous waste treatment facility in Sahar that is uh, almost operational. And we also have healthcare waste facilities to treat the different healthcare uh, waste. So thankfully, uh, since the beginning of this year, we are now in uh, charge of 100% of the waste uh, in our man. So that is, uh, that is very exciting, but it's also a big responsibility. And how do you decide or how do you judge that these are the locations for the landfill? Because um, what we understand, yes, it's engineered <coughs> landfill, it is made properly, but how do we decide that it should not uh, harm the underground soil and strat all yeah. the strata below? So how do you all decide that? How do you all come to a point that this is the perfect location away from everybody not harming anyone and also not harming the soil below. Okay, so they don't harm the soil below. They have geoliners uh, according to the USPA specs and European specs. So any leachate, which is the nasty liquid that kind of yes. uh, oozes out of the waste, goes to a leachate treatment plant. Okay. And each of these landfills has a leachate treatment plant that treats the leachate and the water that comes out of the leachate is actually used for plantation around the uh, landfill. So nothing goes inside the soil anymore. It does not happen in our landfills. But also, uh, on a side note, we are actually, a, 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 from a conservation perspective, we noticed that a lot of these vultures uh, like our landfills for feeding grounds. And they, uh, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, of them, you know, migrate there. So we're in the process of building uh, what's one of, what we call raptor feeding cages, where we're gonna kind of have a conservation tower and educational tower where people can come bird watch and we educate them about these migrating raptors and these uh, vultures. So it's becoming, uh, I think, uh, more uh, environmentally friendly uh, as much as can be a, way, a landfill. Um, we're, we're mindful of time. Um, it's very exciting. We've got all these questions. Um, I'll just maybe try to wrap it up in one or two um, high level questions that touch on it. So bringing it back to education, which has been the kind of underlying theme here. Um, there's been a few questions around kind of developments in curriculum. 
Um, there was an interesting question that came up around, I think, graduate programs related to sort of sustainable practices and, and the elements within it, within companies. What are your thoughts on that? Do you, do you think that will grow? Um, are you working on aspects related to that? Uh, we are, again, it's still in the very early stages. Uh, I think even a lot of, you know, not just companies, but a lot of schools and universities around the world, this topic is fairly, fairly new and there's, it's evolving. Uh, so I don't have a clear cut answer for that, but I think um, if we stay the course, uh, you know, with these professional training courses, uh, I think the message will get out there. Um, coming from a sort of um, broad background myself and um, becoming more and more involved in the sustainability sector, I'm also seeing that there's a, a sort of explosion of different courses out there. So it's definitely um, an area that's on the rise. And considering that most organizations and governments will be having to deliver for the SDGs in the next 10 years, this is going to become even more important. So uh, as, you've, as you've touched on. Um, I'm just coming back. I'll choose one final question. Okay. Um, okay. So perhaps um, one way to close is for you to highlight where you think um, the opportunities are for youth in this sector. You've touched on some SMEs and some startup organizations. You've mentioned a few. Um, do you think that there will be more opportunities for education and um, sort of work placement programs within these startup funds? Do you think that there will be more of those in the future? Yes, I believe so. Uh, and, and again, uh, a lot of the government uh, authorities and the uh, Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Higher Education uh, are working with, with us and working with various authorities to kind of uh, really have the sustainability mindset uh, and environment sustainability planted, you know, to see planted in these uh, children, in these uh, aspiring uh, entrepreneurs. And, you know, almost on a weekly basis, we have, uh, you know, some student company or some young SME reaching out to us, asking for support and, uh, you know, for help. And we do offer it when we, uh, when we can. So that is definitely very, very exciting. Okay. So any young entrepreneurs, they need to get in touch with you <laughs> to share their ideas. Great. Um, I'm sorry if we haven't, if you feel we haven't addressed your question. Um, if it's still burning, um, then please put it in the comments box when we post it on YouTube and we will answer it there. Um, we'll take a snapshot anyhow and just make sure we've answered everything. Um, but from my side, that's a thank you to everyone who's posed the question. I, I'll hand back over to Mariam who can help handle the closing remarks. Um, so, Dr. Mohab, uh, thank you, April and Sathana, for asking the uh, additional questions, and Dr. Mohab for graciously answering as many questions. Uh, we, I, if believe it or not, we still have about twenty questions that are unanswered. Uh, however, we will try and find a way to ask, answer these questions. A lot of them are related to how B is handling different types of waste, be it solid, hazardous um and so on and then your major achievements when it comes to ECE as well as what you guys are doing to augment uh the education in in aspects of sustainability and environment um so I believe a lot of these questions can be answered perhaps through the website and the ECE um uh, excellence uh, uh, um, uh center of design excellence sorry is it design? No, it's not design. Excellence. Environmental Center of Excellence. Environmental, Environmental Center of Excellence. <laughs> um, perhaps uh, the website and those pages can help uh, the attendees better understand what you guys are doing, the initiatives that you're you taking, the community outreach, which I believe is, uh, let's say, the most important aspect um, in, in ensuring that all of these um, initiatives, programs, training programs, um, 
are able to move uh, the vision forward. Um, any closing remarks, Dr. Mohab, that you'd like to share with the attendees before we end the meeting or the webinar? Uh, thank you very, thank you very much for uh, you know hosting me, and uh, I'm very, very happy to see a sustainable Oman, uh, you know, campaign. A group of people uh, that are passionate about this, just as we are. So I think uh, we look forward to uh, collaborating and complementing each other in the future. Thank you very much. And I'd like to take uh, a chance to thank all the attendees. Uh, like I had mentioned before, uh, we'll try our best to take your questions and perhaps uh, either answer, the, answer them on the uploaded, uploaded video. Uh, we're going to be uploading this video um, on our official YouTube channel. Um, and we will answer these questions there uh, as best as we can. Um, and thank you. And uh, thank you guys for attending. Uh, we try to keep it as short and sweet as possible. But of course, I believe Dr. Mohab is, has a wealth of information that he's more than happy to share. Uh, but we'd also have to be uh, quite uh, sensitive to the time. Uh, so with that, I'd like to end the webinar and thank everyone and especially Dr. Mohab. And uh, we will see you soon in our next webinar. Um, we will be uh, advertising it in uh, or marketing it on our um, Sustainable Oman Instagram. And if you have any additional questions, uh, we'll see if Dr. Mohab uh, will graciously share his email. Uh, we'll see about that. Uh, but thank you guys and have a good night. Sure. I can and I can type it in the chat. It's fine. Sure. Thanks. If 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 everyone Thank you. Can. you can go ahead and um uh, Dr. Mohab type your uh, email if you'd like to share it and the website for BIA. Sure. And the page for um, ECE. And ISWA as well. Sure. Whilst um, you're typing that information in, I, I would also like to just draw your attention back to Sustainable Oman. So please don't hesitate also to follow up on our website. Um, there you'll find information and links through. Um, it's a sort of circular website, really. <laughs> thing happening, you'll find information to bear and it will come back hopefully to us as well. Um, we've got a number of ongoing campaigns, so you can become aware of them then, there and also um, directly participate. So that's just from the Sustainable Oman side. But thank you very much again, Dr. Mohab. And thanks, everybody. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Mohab. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Uh, I'll be in touch, Dr. Mohab. Uh, you're uh, not. I'm absolutely. Not, you're not. Uh, what to call this? You're still, uh, you know, in my calendar. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, and good evening. Thank you, April, Sadhana, and Mayan. Thank Have you. a good evening and stay Thank safe. You. Thank you, Agnes. Stay healthy. Yeah. Stay safe. Right. Have a good night. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah. Mm -hmm.